Keeping passion alive is finding out what you're passionate about and doing more of it. It's always been wellness and art. The company that I have, the Manifest Company, we put graffiti art and designs on yoga mats. I didn't know anything about high yoga. I just kind of stumbled into it, and that's what really changed my life. Hi, my Pison Noel show, Passion Propellers and Bold Beauties. Today, I have a friend of mine that I'm super excited about. He is in Krav Maga. I just made sure I said that right. <laughs> He's a it's yoga right. instructor. <laughs> and an entrepreneur with Manifest Company, but we'll get into that soon. His name is Carlton. Hi, Carlton. How you doing? Hi, Ms. Price. I'm good. I'm Thanks good. for having me. <laughs> thank you for coming. I'm super excited to have you here. And yeah. I love your background. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. I designed it. One of my passions is art. I create dives. So I like buy old school records and like Goodwills, yard sales, that sort of thing. And sometimes these crates, they just have empty record cases and no records in them. So I just saved them for like years. And then one day I needed some artwork and I was like, well, I got these record cases. So I was like, all right, let me rearrange them in a way where you can't see the messed up edges and the writing and the smudges and then glued them to a canvas. And here we go. Man, I, I would never thought of that, but it looks good. It looks great. <laughs> it was just really setting the vibe. So if y'all are listening it. on podcast, you got to come on YouTube because number one, all of my guests are so nice looking and number two, <laughs> you got to see the background. So <laughs> yeah, pull up, pull up to the YouTube yes. channel. Listen, none of my friends are ugly. So I said, we going to do some YouTube too. We not only doing podcasts, we need to see some faces. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Pull up to the YouTube. See what's up. See what's up. Of course, on Pipes and Noel Show, we talk everything passion, and we're just talking about how we need to keep passion alive and keep it in our lives. To me, passion is the driver, and it keeps us going, it keeps us pushing, and whether it's a new passion or an old passion, it's important to have something going and to keep it going in your life. So when I talk about passion and keeping passion alive, what's the first thing that comes to your mind, Carlton? Keeping passion alive is finding out what you're passionate about and doing more of it. First thing is like, what's your passion? What drives you, inspires you? What are the things that you would probably do for free? It's fun. Doing more of that is keeping it alive. So so what's one of the passions that you have had? It's always been wellness and art, I would say. So it'll be some type of like yoga. And yoga got me into fighting, Krav Maga, boxing, jujitsu, martial arts, even sports as a young kid, nutrition, eating healthy, juicing. And then like the art side, you see the the record covers behind me, the company that I have that I'm partnered in, co-founder, uh, the Manifest Company, we, we put graffiti art and designs on yoga mats so they're not just plain gray and blue yoga mats. And just clothing, you know, being in clothing and fashion and music too, and inspired by art. So wellness and art are in my two like main sort of passions. What sports did you play? Because you mentioned sports. I played all of them really growing up. Baseball, uh, soccer, a little bit of football, but predominantly basketball, really a hooper. Once it was done hooping, kind of got into yoga, just weightlifting, and then weightlifting got me into yoga, and then fighting. Um, I got into fighting just because I was low-key, I was scared. It was during the time of, like, the Trayvon verdict, and, you know, just being a Black guy. Police are one thing, but civilians um, can get off. I was like, ooh, for me, it just set wrong. I was like, yeah, I got to. I got to feel empowered. And so that kind of prompted me to jump into that martial arts pool. Yeah, wellness, man. Love it. Love feeling good. I love helping others. I got a black guy in yoga, getting people into yoga for one and just getting the people of color in, more into yoga and seeing like yoga leads to meditation, leads to like change in diet, change in perspective. It's wonderful. Yeah, that is so awesome. And you tapped on some of the stuff that I wanted to ask about. What age were you when you got into the yoga part? I was late in life. I was in my late 20s, actually. I got into yoga kind of accidentally. I got into the gym first. Like, I was really, really, like, big gym rat. Just getting real, real buff. I'm, like, maybe 195 now. I got up to, like, 215. I was huge. But I had no mobility. And so I wanted to stretch. And at the time, I was doing yoga just, like, once a month. And one of my friends was like, yo, I can get you free yoga. So I'm like, free? Free 99? That's all right. Tell me more. And one of the yoga studios out here, uh, they had a work for trade program where you worked at the yoga studio for four hours a week and you got unlimited yoga. And so I did that and it was actually a hot yoga studio. I didn't know anything about hot yoga. I just 
kind of stumbled into it and then I stumbled into the heat and I was like what is this it's crazy but I started to feel good and like I started to shred but I was getting stronger and I was in the studio so much that I ended up doing a 30-day challenge and that's what really changed my life yeah and now you actually teach right yeah uh-huh. did somebody say you should teach or did you just feel the urge or what got you into the teaching uh honestly I never wanted to teach Honestly, I really just wanted to deepen my practice. Like I said, in 2016, I did my first 30-day challenge, 30 days consecutively of hot yoga. I did it accidentally. Like I was just at the studio and I just happened to do three straight days of yoga just because I wanted to, not thinking about the challenge. And at my studio, they put your name on a board and like put stickers by your name. I didn't put the stickers there and I didn't even put my name there. But then I look up and I got like three stickers with my name. I'm like, oh, I didn't want to do this challenge. And I'm like, I got yeah. stickers now. I'm like, I'm, why you put stickers? Like, like, and so I felt like I couldn't stop at three because I had got three stickers. And I was like, damn it. Now you don't want to be on the board with three stickers. And nothing. Yeah, I didn't want to stop. People are going to go and have like 30, 17, 20 stickers. And I got three. Like, yeah. I was like, all right, first, let me get the seven. I can get the seven. Yeah. Seven. seven is good. You already got three, four more days. Got to seven. Now, by day seven of hot yoga, I started to like wake up early, like with the sun, like early in the morning, 5.45. I mean, early up with energy, like no coffee, no nothing. And I was like, hmm, this is interesting. Why am I getting up early? I'm not even thinking about the yoga thing. I'm just getting up early. This is weird. Finish the first week of the yoga challenge. Let me get to day 14. So continue with the challenge by day 14, I'm getting up early for real. And now I'm having vivid dreams, lucid dreams. You got to get on the internet. Like, yo, what does, what does all this stuff mean? Like I saw, mm-hmm. saw a lion, I saw this bird from, like, this, is, this is crazy. Like, and I'm remembering and I'm up early. So it's like, all right, what's going on with this yoga situation? Cause now I got this energy. I'm up. I got these dreams. Let's get to week three. I get to week three, now it's just compounding. So now I'm up, up, like I'm up, like I'm thinking about going to the gym now. I got energy, like I'm having these lucid dreams. And now people, random people, I'm talking about men, I'm heterosexual. I'm talking about men coming up like, yo, dude, ain't none of that. I just, I I just had to ask you, what's your skin routine? Like, Like, dude, like, you know, like really? Like women, old women, white ladies, just random people was coming up like, yo, what are you doing for your skin? First, I'm waking up early. Now I'm having all these dreams and I'm sleeping well. I'm waking up early, remembering them. And now people are like, yo, your skin and all this other stuff. And then finally, I'm like, all right, I'm three weeks in. Let me just finish it. Let me finish these last couple of days. And then by the end of the 30 days, I shredded like 10, 15 pounds. I had unbelievable energy. I was waking up early on my own. I mean, before my alarm. I was having amazing sleep. I saw my dad and he was like, he's like, are you getting taller? I was like, that's a weird question to ask somebody in their late 20s. People were still coming up to me like, what are you doing for your skin and your hair? Something happened in this 30 days. I felt like a whole year younger. I was going to the gym prior to this 30 day challenge. And then because of this 30 day challenge, I'm like, I'm not going to do hot yoga and go to the gym. I'm going to do hot yoga. And then when I feel like energetic, I'll add the gym. So Instead of going to the gym four or five times a week, I would go once. So I'm thinking after this 30-day challenge, I done lost weight. I just been doing all this yoga. I know I, I lost muscle mass. I know I'm, I'm not as strong, all right? So I go to the gym after the 30-day challenge. My max is like 20 pounds heavier. How the hell did I get stronger doing yoga? That's what prompted me is like, yo, I got I to gotta just learn what's going on for me. I never wanted to teach. I never wanted to hold space for nobody else. I just wanted to teach for me. And so after the 30 day challenge, naturally I was doing yoga more obviously, but I was still doing weightlifting, weightlifting. And then the following year I did my first 90 day challenge. So I did 90 day, 90 day challenge, which turned into a hundred days, which turned into 120 days, which ended up being at the end of it, 401 days of straight yoga. So what? Yeah, 2017 and the Mr. Davio. So 
Oh my gosh. 90% of those were, were heated. During that time in 2017, I did my first teacher training as well. Like I, I was in it. I was in it to win it. I changed my diet. I went vegetarian. Like I'm from Atlanta. I'm from the South. We eat chicken. We throw down pork chops. All right. So I went vegetarian. I was just like, I just want to try it. Why not? Why not change my diet? Why not see what it's about? And the first month was crazy. And then I met somebody at Trader Joe's. I was just looking for stuff. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. And this lady was like, what are you doing? Can I help you? And I was like, listen, man, I'm going to be real. I'm trying to be a vegetarian. And I just can't do it. I don't know what to cook. She just broke it down. She was like, you got to think of everything like a bowl. Think about Chipotle. You go to Chipotle, what do you got? You got your, your rice. You got your lettuce. You got your beans or your veggies. You just got to substitute the meat. I was like, oh, that makes sense. Instead of chicken, you got potatoes, sweet potatoes, you can do some tofu, you got jackfruit, you got all these different options. And I was like, all right, think of it like just building a bowl from Chipotle. I just started cooking more, started getting into making more smoothies and juices, got into juicing, and it just started to snowball into other stuff. So, oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, what a cool journey. Yeah, it's been, it's been epic, kind of cool. Yeah, I never knew your journey. All of a sudden, I was like, oh, I didn't know he did yoga. Then I just kept seeing like more leveling up. I saw you teaching your classes and I saw videos and then I saw the manifest. It's cool to hear the story behind it. I can't believe you did a full year of yoga a day. Yeah, I didn't miss a day. Woo! When I traveled, I would find a studio. So some studios were non-heated. A studio I've never been to. Sometimes it was on vacation. It was on holiday. The one studio that was open on a holiday that had... The only two classes, and I'll be like, all right, I'm going to that. Wow. Yeah, it was oh, crazy. that is so cool. Yeah. So cool. In season two, we had Cornelius. I think you know Cornelius. Um, yeah, so he talked about his experience as a Black man in the yoga space. Do you have anything to share about your experience as Black man? Yeah, there's not many of us. I mean, the space, <laughs> <laughs> the, the space is growing. You know, the wellness space, especially yoga, you look at the space and also how it's been marketed versus Indian and it's marketed to predominantly like white women, right? And so when you see people doing yoga, you don't see yourself, you don't understand it as, as well. I'm from the South, so coming from a Christian back home, growing up in a church, and then you got this yoga thing and you don't see no Black people in yoga. And then you kind of discover it for yourself and you're like, oh, that's not, I'll be fine. Like, this is good. You know, I'm six one with dreads and a beard. Like, you know, I don't see another one of me in my classes hardly ever. Mm -hmm. And so just being a teacher and speaking out to that, doing things like this, like this podcast and manifest company and just talking to people about my yoga journey and why like yoga changed my life and how it kind of got me into other things and just being an advocate for the space and advocate for just wellness and yoga it's like all right if he's doing it i can i can do it let me tap into that there's not a lot of us but space is growing and then i think a lot of people just are realizing they need more healing you know there's more mental health that's just overall just needed more physical wellness just overall that's just needed you know especially within our communities so uh yeah just want to be a part of it and tribute and be a service, share my story, help because it changed me. So, and the people that I've gotten into it, just since I've gotten into it, I've gotten other people who look like me and they, you know, they did their own teacher trainers. There's some of them full on juicing and vegan, like way beyond me. I was just like the, yo bro, you need to come do this. Trust your boy, come do this. And they got into it. Now they, they got their own journey. So I've seen what it's done. Even my parents, my parents are in their 70s. So it's like, all right, you can't do a yoga pose, but get on this tennis ball and roll out your foot. Feel better. You, you're sitting down, do this little stretch for your back. If you do this thing for your shoulder, it can help your, your arthritis. Or here, take this juice. You've got a little cough. I know a juice, a, a ginger shot, knock that right out. So just being in the space and wellness is not just for me and people my age, it's for everybody. Hey, something's wrong all right, check this out. I might have something to at least help you out in that area. So that's it. We always talk about on the show about serving purpose and purpose is to me helping people in some kind of way. You're definitely serving purpose. And I just really love to hear your story. And it's so 
commendable and inspiring that you are able to do so. And just by you being you and even the stuff that I see is super inspiring. So just know that we see you and you're serving purpose and you're shining and inspiring Black people and all people, but especially us Black people. Congrats on that and thank you. Thank you. That means, that means a lot to me. Like I said, I just try to be real. It's been working for me, so I just try to, you know, I'm not trying to hide information. I'm trying to put us all on. So any way I can, just want to help, man. So. I love that. I saw some stuff about some classes with all Black men or men of color, I believe. Yeah. Is that right? Um, yeah. So can you tell me about that? Through a Black wellness community. It's a nonprofit. They have free yoga every Sunday in the park. It's a real vibe. It's like 200, 300 Black people, but it's, all people are welcome. But mostly of us, we just do a free yoga flow in the park, in the sun. We meditate. We vibe out. It's a cool, cool experience. The CEO, the, the head, the president of that organization, he wanted to do something strictly for males. So... That organization put on a wellness seminar where black males come together, meditate, we flow, and we journal and we talk. We talk about like what's really good, what's real. And it's meant to be more of like a healing circle where you can kind of tap in with other males of masculine energy, you know, share what's really on your heart, what you're really going through and feel like it's in a safe environment. It's really, really, really impactful. You know, I've been blessed to be not only a member and attended it just as a participant, but be able to lead a flow for them. Yeah, I saw this picture of you and all the men of color in that class, and I got all teary-eyed because I want us to be able to have that safe space. So it was really cool. Black men need healing. We all need healing, man. Yeah. You know, all, one form or another, have experienced some form of hurt, trauma, early in life, late in life, and exacerbated by social media and just change and just being alive now is it's just harder than ever it seems like so we all need some form of like support there's always like therapeutic support where you can share what you're going through with somebody who's not going to judge you or you can do a flow for yourself if you're going through some shit, man like do a yoga flow and at least for an hour you're zoned out right you can meditate and at least meditate 10 minutes you don't think of hurting yourself or others right because you took a step back but just figuring out kind of what works for you and then just do more of that i've learned and just want to bless people so that's really it you know you talk about how wellness is for everybody yoga is for everybody and i just appreciate on your platform and through everything that you do we you just keep expanding what it looks like for us so that's why i really enjoy seeing your page and seeing all the stuff you do so i appreciate that and now let me segue into one other thing having to do with the yoga, the Manifest Company with those dope mats and everything. I want to hear all about that. So the Manifest Company. Stay tuned for part two of Carlton on the Paisa Noel Show. 